Hey guys, in this tutorial we are going to learn how to create a tab view, like this one, with different fragments in every tab. Ok, let's do this. For this we are going to create a new Android Studio project. I just give it the name example project, next. We will just keep target API 19 here, next. And here we won't choose empty activity, but this one here, tapped activity, next. We keep the names as it is and change navigation style to action bar tabs with view pager, finish. Now we get this project here. And if we click on main activity, we can see that there's actually already a lot of code prepared for us. We have our main activity with our onCreate method, we have an options menu, we have this inner static class placeholder fragment, and we have a fragment pager adapter already prepared for us. Let's also take a look at our main activity layout, and we can see we have a coordinator layout, we have this toolbar here and an app bar layout, we have a view pager which contains our fragments and we have this floating action button which is not really important. So let's see how this looks when you start it on our emulator without any changes. Okay, we see a hello world from section 1, hello world from section 2. So these tabs are already implemented so we don't have to do that from scratch. But when we look in our main activity and down to this adapter in the get item method we can see that what happens here is actually it always returns this one fragment we get provided up here but with a different argument. So it passes position plus one, which means that our position start from zero, so we pass number starting from one. When we then go to our fragment, we can see that this argument is passed here, section number, and then in onCreate view, it uses that section number to change this text view here to a hello world from section, then it takes this argument, which is the number it gets provided, and the result is this text here. Hello world from section 1, from section 2, from section 3. But we always have one and the same fragment. But sometimes we maybe want our tabs to contain completely different fragments, with different arguments, a different layout, and so on. So let's change this. For this we create three different fragments. We go to our package, right click, and in your real project you should choose this fragment, fragment blank, because it already provides you a lot of dummy methods, which makes the process for you easier. But since we don't need a lot of this code in this example, I will just create a fragment from scratch with this Java class. So I call it frag1, the superclass will be fragment v4, ok, and also I prepare the layout as a new layout resource file, call it frag1 layout. So I won't do anything in this layout besides changing the background color so we always see which fragment we are actually looking at. So I change this to, let's say, red. I copy this for the other two fragments but I change the name to frag2 and frag3 and I change the background color as well. I change this to blue and frag3 will be green. Ok, back to our frag1 class. The only method I'm going to overwrite is control O on create view. And in here I'm going to pass the layout we just created. So I change this to return inflator.inflate, then I pass our layout for fragment 1. I pass container, which is the view group which then contains this fragment layout. And for attached to root I pass false. Ok, let's copy this class for our fragment 2 and fragment 3. And we change the name of course. And here we change this to frag2 layout and the same for frag3, frag3 layout. Ok, back to our main activity. We go down to a get item and instead of passing this one fragment three times, we want to pass our three different fragments for the different tabs. 
So we delete this part here. We create a fragment which we will set to null initially. And then we create a switch statement. We say switch. Then we check for the position we get provided here. And depending on this position, we will show different fragments. So if the position is zero, which is the first position, our fragment, which we created up here, will be a new frag one. And then we write break to leave the switch statement. Next is case one. In this case, fragment will be our new frag two. Break again. And case two, which is our third position. So it will provide your frag three. And down here, we return this fragment. Okay, let's test it. So as you can see, now instead of getting an instance of the same fragment all the time, we get three different fragments. In a real project, you shouldn't create these fragments like this. Instead, you should choose this fragment class here, which provides you this new instance method. This new instance method makes it easier to pass arguments. It already has two arguments prepared here, which you can change. So when you uh, create this new fragment, you should instead call not new blank fragment like this, but blank fragment dot new instance. And then you can pass your arguments. So this is how you would do it in a real project with real fragments. But in this case, we just choose this way because we didn't have any arguments for our fragments. And also down here, we could change the titles for our tabs. We could change this to a fragment one. Fragment two. Fragment three which will result in this. This fragment page adapter we get provided is good if you don't have many different tabs because it saves the instances of every tab. If you have a lot of different tabs, you should instead choose fragment stage page adapter, like it says up here, because this will destroy fragments as soon as you swipe away from them. I hope this was helpful. Take care.